الذين يأكلون الربا لا يقومون إلا كما يقوم الذي يتخبطه الشيطان من الماس so on the one hand, there's a person who, we, who worries about their future in the Akhirah. La khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun is their concern. They want to be from those people. They spend in the path of Allah all the time. And then there's a guy who wants to make money whether he's sleeping or awake. Day and night he wants to make money. Well, how can you make money sleeping and awake? You can get your money to make money for you. That's what riba is. Riba is making you money when you're sleeping and when you're awake, right? It's, it's this passive income. That's supposed to be money made from money itself. And the essential, you know, there's actually an old book. I don't know if I can dig it up now. It's, uh, it was written by a, a, an Indian scholar in English. It was written in the 60s. It was called Man and Money. See if you can find it. I forgot the scholar's name. It's called Man and Money. And it's basically a thesis he wrote on the effects of riba on a society and how banks will eventually go bust and houses will collapse because mortgages are happening and, then the, and jobs will be lost and the, this entire bubble that's built by riba will collapse. It was written in the 60s in, in India. I was like, Whoa, that's kind of pretty good foresight because <laughs> that's what riba does and is doing, you know. So, alladhina yaakuluna riba la yaqumuna, they stand on nothing, they have no basis. La yaqumuna, they don't stand, meaning you don't see them around. That's the figurative meaning. Those who consume riba, you don't see them around. They don't stand. Illa kama yaqumu alladhi yatakhabbatuhu shaytanu min almas. Except just like the one who stands around that has been touched by, or has been taken by the shaytan, grabbed by the shaytan with a touch. In other words, the devil has touched someone was an expression that someone's gone crazy. Someone's wild, their hair's all over the place, their disheveled clothes, and they're running crazy in the street. Takhabbatuhu shaytan min almas. That was the expression. Allah says people who consume riba are that crazy. You want to see an example of that? And now it's not as, because most trading happens online now, but back in the day stock market, the floor of the Wall Street stock market, you want to see يَتَخَبَّتُهُ الشَّيْطَانِ مِنَ الْمَسْ You watch a video of that, opening and closing bell. You'll see it. You'll see what that looks like. People, dignified, educated people turning into crazy wild animals. You know? Then there are, I, I, I saw a lot of this personally. I, I went to business school in New York City in Baruch College. And I mean, most of my friends from the MSA were finance majors. And you know, in finance majors, by the time you're a junior in college, they teach you how to trade in the stock market. And even back in the day, E-Trade was a new thing. So they all got hooked on to E-Trade, right? And they're in investing in all this stock, you know, a couple of hundred dollars, a thousand bucks, whatever they're investing. And they're sitting there on the computer screen in the library on their 56K connection. And they're waiting for the line to jump up. And it jumps up, and they jump up. And it goes down and they go down. Oh my God. Oh please, 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 Ya Allah, please, 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 let this riba rise. And then it rises up again and they jump up. In the middle of the library, a guy will scream, yes! Sell, 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 sell. They'll go crazy. This yatakhabbatuhu shaitan min al-mas. Shaitan has got, it's, it's like shaitan has touched them. Also, this implies you can't reason with them anymore. When they start tasting that kind of lifestyle of riba, then there's no reasoning with them. They go crazy. And then, you, and how crazy do they get? Well, they say, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا الْبَيْعُ مِثْلُ الْرِبَا That is because they say, Bay is just like riba, trade, business. Business which Allah made halal, is just like riba, what's the difference? I rent a house, I pay the same money. I mortgage a house, I pay the same money. What's the difference? Financially, the same amount of money left my pocket. What difference does it make? I give somebody, you know, money, and they give me, I give somebody a hundred bucks, they pay me back hundred and twenty in two weeks. I give somebody a hundred bucks, they invested it, made some profit and paid me back hundred and twenty. I still got hundred and twenty, what's the difference? It's the same, liquid assets, solid assets, it's okay. And those who study economics and finance, they can become very, a lot more sophisticated than I am to actually say, oh, it's all the same. There's really no difference. It's all good. So the more knowledgeable you are, the more halal you can make it. <coughs> right? The less knowledgeable you are, the, the, the more black and white the lines are for you. And then you use your knowledge to gray the lines and say, yeah, it's all good. It's all fine. Everything's fine. You know? And then, then on top of that, there's a new logic. Oh, I'm going to take a student loan. The, the new riba, right? And the, the, the riba that's eating away at the Muslim community, student loans. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100,000 dollars in student loans. To do an accounting major. Do some accounting. What are you going to get in an accounting major? What kind of salary are you going to earn? And how long will you have to earn that salary to pay off to become an accountant? Do some math. 
talk to people in your field. You know, it's not even good dunya business. It doesn't even make sense in the in, in a worldly sense financially. What to speak in the akhirah? And then people want to go to prestigious schools, so they want to pay three, four, five, six times what a state school will ask for, or what a city school will ask for. And in the end, they're both jobless. Right? They're, I mean, seriously. They're both jobless. All, all this prestige and all that name, all you paid for was a whole bunch of debt. It's all you paid for. You know, I want you to guys, if you get a chance, if you find any time other than reading Quran, which should take up most of your time, if you find that time outside of that, read this book. It's called Brandwashed. It's called Brandwashed. It just came out, a recent book. It's awesome. How we have been convinced of value in brands, whether they're schools, or shoes, or cars, or clothes, right? We're convinced of brands all around it. And we can be convinced that our, our happiness and our dignity and our self-worth lies in the brands that we hold in our hands. SubhanAllah. The brand of the university we graduated from. We should name it, we should buy its sweatshirt and wear it around so people can ask, hey, you went to Ola? Cool. It's pretty awesome. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Still paying for it. <laughs> Actually, my parents are because I don't have a job. You know, I spend most of my days on Netflix or something. But yeah, they're paying for my college. This is, and so they'll argue. In the, and so the new argument is, hey, you're going to go become a doctor. Take the loan. You're going to save lives. It's a good thing. You're doing an ibadah for, I even heard this. You're doing an ibadah for the sake of Allah. Go take the, the riba loan. Oh! What? When did that happen? When has that ever been argued? When in Islam did the ends ever justify the means? When did that ever happen? SubhanAllah. The insanity of it all. When people get engulfed into a... And you know, I, and this is the last comment I'll made about, make about this, but I think it's relevant. Muslims have to be convinced that our deen is the solution. Our deen is the solution for our personal problems, our family problems, our community problems, and the world's problems. The problem of world peace, Allah's book has something to say about that. The problem of corruption, Allah's book has something to say about that. The problem of economic corruption, Allah's book has something to say about that. I'll add to that now. The smartest minds in the Muslim world, some of the most intelligent people in the Muslim world, live right here in the United States and are getting higher education. And those minds are not being used to expose or to explore how Islam is a solution. They're actually submitting themselves to the modern world as the solution. And Islam should cater to the solution. How many people are actually doing research in finance and maybe showing a modern alternative to riba? If we're convinced riba is evil, instead of saying, well, riba is everywhere, you can't escape it now. It's a reality now. At least explore the alternative. Expl at least that. Who should be doing it? Who's going to do that in the world? We are. And that, this is an evil that doesn't just hurt us. It hurts humanity. I mean, just think about it in very layman's terms. I'm not a financial analyst. I'm a very layman person in finance. Just think of it in very basic, primitive terms. You got a, you got a house in New York in 1820. You paid $10,000 for that house. Or I, better yet, you paid a brick of gold for that house. A brick of gold. You paid for that house. Now you own that house. Right? And you, were, you bought it on interest, of course. So you, though you, you're supposed to make payments of 10000 over a course of 20 years, how much did you end up paying? 20, 25,000. Now times come times for you to sell that same house. You're going to sell it for 11,000? 12,000? Make a little profit? What are you going to sell it for? Well, you, sp you spent 25, so you should at least ask for 30. The next guy buys it for 30. He's going to take another 30 years to pay it off. How much did he pay? He paid 60. He's going to sell it. He's going to sell it at least for 70. The next guy buys the same house, same brick. Same foundation, same patch of land, same physical material value. But the next generation and the next generation and the next generation it becomes more and more and more and more difficult for them to afford the same thing. The same exact thing becomes more and more and more difficult for them to afford. And perhaps even the previous generation died paying it off, paying three, four, five, six, seven times the price of what it was actually worth and left their children in debt or homeless. Is that not what's happening around us? You know? And so, 
And then, you know what, what our government did, they, they, they collected gold, right? It was illegal to keep gold. You had to sell it back to the government. So imagine you had gold, a brick of gold. Back in the late 1800s, you had a brick of gold. You had to give it back to the US Treasury. So they gave you $20,000 for your brick of gold, right? Some time has passed by now. You take those same $20,000, the great great grandkids of that guy, he takes the $20,000 back to the bank and says, can I have my brick of gold back, please? He can get a coin. Had he held on to the brick of gold, was that, that value sustained? Yes. Did he take the cash, that value was sustained, or was he robbed? Those generations got robbed of that wealth. People got robbed of that wealth. That's what riba does. That's what riba, it, it robs people of value, of good hard earned money. These people, honest, like non-Muslim people, they're, they're, uh, you know, our, our fellow American citizens, they have decent jobs. They got themselves into predatory loans. They bought homes for $150,000, $200,000, not mansions, decent sized homes. And they were paying $1,500, $1,600 in a mortgage, but it's adjustable rate, right? So they, they jumped the rate from 5% to 8% to 12%. And now all of a sudden, within a month, their mortgage payment went from $1,500 to $3,500. They can't afford it anymore. And so now they're paying for a house that's worth $200,000, they're paying six, dollars $700,000, and they can't. So they're kicked out of their house. And then the bank sells it off. Oh, at a loss of 300,000. A poor bank. Only got to make 100,000 this time. You know, that's riba. That's how riba is eating away at not just us, all of society. It's a means of oppression in society. So when, we, when Muslims don't do serious research in this area, it and even, in and of itself suggests that we've become defeatist. We, have, we don't think there's a solution. We're not confident Allah has a solution. He does. His book does. And it needs to be brought to light. And they're, they're, I, I believe really we have some very intelligent minds. And they can do work in this area. And we can have another economics. We can have clean economics. We can have clean capitalism. We can. Halal capitalism. We can develop that as an, industry, an entire economic model. And if the entire doesn't, world doesn't follow, the Muslims can commit themselves to it. And when the rest of the world sees the benefit of it, they'll follow suit. I told you, right? A brother I met only became Muslim because he read up on Islamic financing. He was a Wall Street guy. <laughs> Looked up ethical financing online. First thing he found was Islamic concepts in financing. He's like, this is way too ethical. It can't be anything but God's religion. Didn't even read the Quran. Just because of we are against riba, he became Muslim. A Wall Street guy. That's incredible. You know? So we have, we're holding on to something. We have something. We just, we have to expose it to people. People aren't going to come to it. People don't come to guidance. We take guidance to people. May Allah Azza wa Jal give our youth and our minds the ability to be put in the right direction. Instead of explaining the intricate differences between business and riba and the fine lines between liquid assets and solid assets and all that jazz, Allah just says one thing and closes the case. Here's the reason why you can't have riba. Because you're crazy, there's no reason to, to reason with you. Why are you crazy? Because shaitan's touched you already. There's no reason he'll work with you. So the only thing you need to hear is, Allah made bay trade, business, halal. And Allah made riba, haram. وَحَرَّمَ riba. فَمَنْ جَاءَهُ مَوْعِذَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِ Then the one to whom a counsel from his master came. A counselor and counsel from his master came. Somebody gave him, gave them really good advice that went inside their heart. And they felt, yeah, I need to get out of riba. I need to stop making money off of riba. فَانْتَهَا Then he stopped. فَلَهُ مَا سَلَفْ Then he'll get whatever he earned in the past. Before this ayah came down, some Sahaba were involved in riba. Now the ayah came, and they're like, okay, I'm going to stop immediately. I'm not collecting any more interest payments. You just pay me exactly what you owe me. But whatever he earned in the past, he was worried about that too. Allah says, no, you get to keep what you already had. Whatever occurred in the past, he gets to keep. And his decision is with Allah. In other words, he shouldn't feel very safe either. And whoever comes back and starts collecting riba again, And those are people of fire, in which they will remain. يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى Allah obliterates riba. Allah eliminates riba. وَيُرْبِ sadaqat And He raises sadaqat. Yurbi is the same root origin as riba. Arba, yurbi to raise something. 
Raba to rise yourself. Riba to something of something to swell and rise yourself. Riba is also used for mutated growths. Like you know how potatoes get some mutations on the side sometimes? They're also called ribas, like unnatural growths. Riba is unnatural growth of your wealth. And Allah says, Allah will make your sadaqat grow unnaturally. He'll make them even more you know, powerful and sustained in society, but Allah will obliterate riba. We're seeing Allah obliterating riba in society now. The housing crisis, the credit crisis, this is, this is Allah obliterating riba. يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ And he will, he will elevate uh, charities. وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ أَثِيمٍ And Allah does not love any single, every single one of those who are excessively disobedient, excessively ungrateful, and constantly in sin. What an incredible combination. And we'll end with this. كَفَّارٍ أَثِيمٍ Kafar is different from kafir. Kafir is ungrateful and disbeliever. Kafar is excessively ungrateful. Someone who engages in riba has engaged in an incredible act of ingratitude towards Allah. It is a highly selfish act to deal in this, in this uh, heinous practice. They're always making money, I told you, even when they're sleeping. So they're constantly making money. So Allah uses the ism sifa, something you learn in sarf, the ism sifa is a theme with a ya in it, which means someone who's constantly in sin. Because the riba is constantly growing. So they're, const they're always in sin. Whether they're sinning physically or not, their money is always sinning for them. Kafar and Athim, Allah doesn't love those kinds of people. They are engrossed in sin all the time. How can a person who's engrossed in sin all the time make dua to Allah? What kind of dua will that be? How will Allah answer? How will he be answered? How can that person be If he's breathing sin, sleeping sin, wearing sin constantly, they're in that, in that environment. What kind of dua will be answered for them? May Allah protect us and our families from riba. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim.